Good day. My name is Ed McFerrin. I'm house counsel for Tax Deferred Exchange Services, who is a qualified intermediary company providing national services for tax deferred exchanges. We are headquartered out of Tacoma, Washington in Western Washington, and we provide these services for clients such as you. Our topic today to discuss are matters of what we call improvements to exchange property in a tax deferred exchange. In our practice, a goodly number of, of transactions occur yearly where we provide improvement services in a tax deferred exchange. Our services as a qualified intermediary, we often say, is the glue that holds a tax deferred exchange together. And I can tell you that an improvement exchange will be one of those things that happens not generally by intention, but will happen as a result of marketplace conditions. In many cases, we have to understand that a tax deferred exchange is a value exchange, which means that we are exchanging one or more properties for other investment properties, possibly one or more. And to the degree that we wish to complete what we call a 100% tax deferred exchange, we're going to actually be acquiring a replacement property or properties equal to the exchange value of our relinquished property. In a nutshell, exchange value is the sale price minus the attributable closing costs. If we accomplish that, we will have a 100% tax deferred exchange. What occurs in the improvement area is by market conditions or happenstance, we find that a client will look to acquire a replacement property and by virtue of negotiations, by virtue of the condition of the property, or by virtue of seeking to have additional improvements made on the property, the client will find that the property value, the exchange value we call it, is actually less and as a result of acquiring the property in its as-is condition, the client finds that they will have not completed 100% tax deferred exchange. They would like to do so. In fact, they would like to make some improvements to the property and would prefer to make those improvements with pre-tax dollars as opposed to acquiring the property, completing a partial tax deferred exchange, receiving the residual funds from the qualified intermediary subject to taxation, and then using those after-tax dollars to make the improvements after the exchange is over with. In short, an improvement exchange is a strategy that's both appropriate and legal under the IRS tax rules that allows an exchange or to make improvements to property within the confines of the exchange in order to potentially maximize the exchange and then maximize the use of dollars. Let's go over a couple examples. I think there's two different methods of completing a reverse exchange. I'm going to explain both of them by giving examples because I think examples will help us to understand. The first example uh, was a client of ours that was looking to exchange out of a relinquished property. Just to give you a little bit of background, his relinquished property was a single family residence. It had been used for investment purposes, it was a rental, and he'd owned the property for many years property was becoming old, it wasn't very energy efficient, and he had seen a deterioration in the neighborhood where the property was located. He was a kind of a do-it-yourself where he liked to make all the repairs and improvements himself, and he became frustrated because as he was becoming older, the improvements were, well, the repairs were becoming more often, and he had found that he had moved away from the property by virtue of a relocation that he had with his job and it was taking longer for him to travel over to the property to make the repairs. In short, he was a good candidate for a tax deferred exchange because he had property that had highly appreciated and talked with his accountant only to find out that he would pay a significant amount of capital gains recapture as well as the Obamacare 3.8% surcharge upon the sale of that property. However, he wanted to obtain a property that was newer, more energy efficient, would not have the repairs necessary, and would be located relatively close to where he lived so he didn't have to travel very far to make repairs and of course didn't want to make many repairs as he became older. He wasn't trying to exchange into a property that was a, a Taj Mahal or extremely, extremely more, more valuable. He just wanted to have a more favorable property in a more stable location. 
his broker came across a property located just a, about a half a mile from his house that had been the subject of a burn. There had been a fire at the property and it had burned significantly only to be purchased by a builder who went through the work and effort of getting the permits ready and the plans ready, but had financial difficulty and couldn't complete the project. The builder, because he couldn't complete the project, put the property on the market for sale and it was an as is, whereas sale, except the property was structurally, at least from a foundational standpoint, sound, and a party could buy the property for a relatively good bargain. The client contacted our office to see if this could be a suitable replacement property. We told them, of course, it was real estate, it had land, it was going to be used for investment purposes. The difficulty is that his exchange value his money in the exchange account was about $200,000 and the cost to buy the property was about $50,000. So we told him that he could buy the property for the $50,000 and complete an exchange, but it probably wouldn't be cost effective because the $150,000 of improvements that he would make to the property would be made with after-tax dollars. He found that frustrating and asked if there was a better way. I told them that we have a, a way of doing a improvement tax deferred exchange where during the time period of the exchange, the exchange facilitator or qualified intermediary would actually buy the property and within the exchange period hold the property and make improvements on the property during the 180 day time period in order to continue to use the dollars in the exchange. So in short, we went to closing we used the exchange funds. We created an LLC for the ownership of the property on a temporary basis. With his help of directing us to contractors, we hired contractors uh, for the repairs to the property. And on about the, the 162nd day, we had utilized all the funds in the exchange account and we were about 95 to 96% finished with the property. It wasn't quite finished, but it was finished as far as we were concerned because we had completed all the necessary repairs and we had used all the money that he had in his exchange account. At that time, we conveyed the property to him in the completion of his exchange. And instead of having a partial tax deferred exchange, he had a complete tax deferred exchange, adding a few dollars of his own to finish a little bit of work necessary in order to have the property available for rental. So what we do know is that this is a method of accomplishing a improvement exchange where the qualified intermediary goes into title for the property. Will it happen often? It will happen often enough. Will it happen as often as the next strategy? Probably not. The next strategy in, in our arsenal of, of opportunities for an improvement exchange occurs where a client, by negotiations or value, has looked at and attempts to acquire a replacement property that results in a partial tax deferred exchange. Let's pretend that they have fifteen dollars or $20,000 left over in the exchange account. And the question is, they negotiated a good offer on the property. They don't have enough money to buy another property. And the question we raise with them constantly is to ask them, were there any improvements that you'd like to make to this property? The example I'm going to use here was, again, a single family residence. This was a single family residence that was going to be used for investment purposes. It was going to be a rental. And the party, the exchange or our client, indicated that they had a $15,000 left over in the exchange account, which would come to them as what we call boot and would be subject to capital gains tax. We asked them if there was any improvements on the property that we could make within the confines of the exchange, which would allow them to use that $15,000. Immediately, they indicated that they were ready to replace the HVAC system or the air conditioning and heating system in the building at the time that they were going to buy the property. Interestingly enough, in round figures, the cost of that repair and improvement was almost $20,000. They would have preferred, of course, not to use after-tax dollars to make that improvement and we were able, through the tax deferred exchange improvement, to complete a tax deferred exchange where that $15,000 of what would have been taxable money to them was used in the exchange. Here's what we did. We had a friendly seller 
and we had brokers that were friendly. We asked the seller if we could increase the purchase price by $20,000. And of course that had no impact for the seller because the cost of the HVAC system was going to be $20,000. We asked the brokers to freeze their commission at the previous price so we weren't increasing transaction cost and we agreed on behalf of the buyer to pay for any incremental increases in cost of title or escrow or incremental closing costs associated with the transaction. The contractor agreed to complete the installation of the HVAC system contemporaneous with the closing and agreed to be paid from the closing of the transaction. Our purchaser placed the $20,000 in escrow $15,000 from the exchange account and $5,000 of his own money. And the seller felt comfortable in having those improvements made to the property, knowing full well that if the buyer didn't purchase, that the money was sitting there in escrow to pay for the contractor so that there would be no contractor's lien. At the end of the day, the parties completed the transaction and the buyer purchased the property, utilizing all of the exchange funds, realizing the full exchange value, and completed 100% tax to her exchange. These are just two examples of strategies that can be used in the improvement area. In our practice of completing tax deferred exchanges, we are happy to help and assist in improvement exchanges. And a goodly number of our transactions on a monthly and yearly basis are just that, improvement exchanges. From a practice point of standpoint, I'd like to inform you that very few of our clients actually plan to have improvement exchanges. Most of the time these things occur as a result of buying properties and finding out that the utilization of all the funds in the exchange doesn't happen. What are some examples of improvement exchanges? New fences, new driveways, new roofs, the type of activities that generally don't require a significant amount of time and effort and can be completed contemporaneous with the closing. This is a, a general overview of improvement exchanges. Our staff is more than happy and, and help to, uh, to assist you in your particular situation. Feel free to call us. We're available to provide services throughout the United States, Alaska, Hawaii, and the Virgin Islands for tax different exchanges. And we're happy to answer your questions regarding improvement exchanges. Good day.